another podcast. Another, well, it's the first movie review of the year. We're going to roll some verse on this one. Vish is opening the, opening the podcast. All right, keep going, Vish. What, what, what do we like about this one? Oh, uh, you know, we give our each our opinions. I think we're pretty much even. That's true. That's true. We were. Uh, very critical of those critics. <laughs> yeah, true, true. And, um... Oh, what, what's going to happen for the next three weeks? All right, so this will be your last one for the next three weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, away. On medical leave. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's, it's a religious sabbatical. Oh, my God. Like to call it. <laughs> no, it's just vacation. the temples. It's called a vacay. Vacay. All right, true. Yeah. Well so, needed from this winter. <laughs> so what, what can they do in the meantime? Uh, meantime, yeah, check out her um, past videos, her walkthroughs, or catch up on some of those original podcasts. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. All right, well, here we go. And three, two, one, boom. We're back with another episode of Scratch Gamers. This is episode 30, 84. 84. I was thinking about like half of the eight. I saw like the eight in my head. Okay. And then I like cut it in half and yeah. I was like, oh, it looks like a three. So I said 34, but it's 84, mm-hmm. I believe. I believe it's 84. Okay. Uh, yeah. But this is not your weekly scheduled roundup. This is actually a movie review. Because yeah. we saw glass yesterday and it was pretty dope but we'll get into that this is going to be the last one for how many weeks ish before you're back i think it's like it's like three we do it on saturday so it's like oh my god you're doing three weeks yeah you're going for three weeks well it's like two and a half weeks but oh that's cool i leave on the wednesday oh uh, okay okay true so we won't have how many episodes three Three episodes? Yeah, yeah. Two episodes? Three. Three episodes. Three Saturdays. But what you can look forward to is, well, you can go back and you can watch a bunch of walkthroughs. Our GTA 5 one was <laughs> us. It was really long. It was long. It's like 20 episodes. It's crazy long. Each one was like an hour plus. Um, but yeah, if you if you miss us, you can go watch that in the time being. But mm-hmm. look forward to Vish recapping how cool India is okay. when he gets back. All right. He does this yearly pilgrimage where he visits all the temples, and he renounces everything that is not this his faith. This is such a lie. He uh, he's a very ascetic Hindu. Okay. And he follows the right path of uh, Ganesh. Okay. Yeah. This is all a lie. I follow the path of Shiva, the death dealer. So you're my son. Yes, <laughs> you are my father. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, I thought Shiva Ganesh. She was the not the father. No, he is. Yeah, so you're you're my son. What? No, 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 no. Explain it to me. Wait, Ganesh is the uh, the father of Shiva. No, he's yeah, this he's the son. And I said I follow the path of Shiva. So you said. Oh yeah. Yeah, so I got that flipped around. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Shiva's the powerful one. All right. Anyways, this is not a religious. Or a mystical podcast. This is actually a movie review. So we're going to jump back into it. I got lost there. Yeah, I did too. All right. So (laughs) movie review, Glass, what did you think? Rate it. So we're going to rate it, talk about it, rate it again, because sometimes we sway each other's opinions. That often happens in my favor, but not. it doesn't really happen to Vish. But yeah. All right. So Uh, what are you going to give it? Eight. 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 Nice. Oh, okay. So we're pretty close on this one. I gave it an 8.2. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Why did I not give it an 8? And an 8.2, because I felt like it constituted just a little bit higher than an 8. It okay. was good. So what what do you think about it? Oh, man, I thought it was... Uh, critics were so wrong on this one. Really, eh? What, yeah. what was the uh, overall critic opinion? Well, it was like a 50, right? Something like that. Was it 50% or... I think so. Something oh, okay, like sure. Something like that. Oh, was it 50% on what, Rotten Tomatoes? It's a good question. We'll find out. Was it IMDb? I trust IMDb. Well, IMDb... Is, uh, I mean, uh, Rotten Tomatoes gives you both, right? True. So that's well, just... I I like to re- read the user reviews on it. Our right, so is currently oh, pulling it up. It is worse than fifty. Oh really? Oh, it's thirty six percent. Ooh, <laughs> from critics. Okay. But the audience score, which is very similar to ours, is seventy seven. Okay, true. So it's almost an eight. 
Yeah. All right. So, what did you what did you like about the movie? Why did you score an eight? Uh, I thought it was a great end to the trilogy that he had. Um, let's see. I think there was a cool message about it in a way. True. I was going to talk about that actually. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, but again, if you don't think about it as a message or whatever, I mean. It always reminds me of uh, Guy Ritchie's line. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're ready to glean what there is to glean, you'll glean what there is to glean. But until right. then, it's just a nice story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the acting by James McAvee? Is that his name? Oh, my God. He is probably the best actor. He's uh, my favorite uh, actor of all time. <laughs> After watching, and then we were re-watching Split, Last night, yeah, because Terry hadn't seen it, and I was oh, like, "Oh, did you oh finish my... it?" No, I didn't finish it, but oh, but I was like, "Oh my god, this guy is so good at acting." Remember that one scene in Split where he's doing like multiple personalities coming out at once? Yeah, he does a lot of that. In he this does movie. a lot of that in this one, so that was really cool. Yeah, I was pretty sick to see. So he's like you, like I think the greatest actor I've ever seen. Right? I'm like, wow, you are sick, bro. Right? Like yeah. I, I think the um... well, it's almost like you have to be that way, like DID. Dissociative identity yeah. disorder. If you're an actor, because you have to like pretend you're. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's you know, true. That's very true. Jump in these modes. And but stuff. it felt like, uh, yeah, his acting skills were like top notch. Right? Oh god, like, yeah. It was like uh, everybody else is kind of like not that great. <laughs> yeah, they were kind of just being themselves. Yeah. You know, like Samuel L. Jackson was like, yeah, you always act in the same way, and like Bruce Willis, <laughs> you always act the same way, but like, freaking, you're just like blown. I was just blown away by mm -hmm. his his acting skill. But I remember him as Professor Xavier, so I was like, ah. Eh. Like, oh, yeah, Professor yeah. X. That's right. That's and you right. watch it, you're like, oh my god, this guy's so good at his it's like job, his craft. <laughs> right, yeah. I wonder if he did X Men just to get in the limelight, just to show off his real acting skill later. You know what I mean? It's kind of like. I think a lot of that is uh, sort of done like that. It's like a good blockbuster to get your name out there, and then you can yeah, exactly. try out these little, uh, these different types of roles. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 for sure. So. Um, M. Night Shyamalan. You like so good. Like I remember, I remember watching um, Unbreakable in the theaters when I was a kid. When they said like, "Oh, it was 19 years ago," and I was like, "How old was I?" So I was like 11 years old. So I think that was where the critic was uh, going. Uh, mm -hmm. From what I've heard, it was like, um, I guess don't, people don't remember anything of Unbreakable, mm -hmm. and then and then to watch that it now, to, and then like, watching it now, and then. But they do uh, show you scenes, though, from a yeah, little bit. I loved how so he did I like that. So I like that. I like doing that uh, from the Unbreakable. Like, yeah, uh, how, how, how they merged. But you could tell when they merged it because, like, it got extra grainy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm, okay. But I love how they did that. They made it like they used all the footage from the first movie. But yeah, I mean, yeah, when they had to go back, yeah. Sick. Yeah, and I think they used the same sun. Yep. I was like, wow, they used the same actors. Good job. <laughs> Yeah, that was really cool. This is a, he was this was a twenty year. Is that would project. that be like the original idea of a trilogy? Like, I don't think there was anything like that at that time when Unbreakable came out, right? No, I don't think so. So I don't think he was even thinking of doing that. Until. No, he was definitely not. And then I heard like he when he was filming Split, he kept this kind of under wraps that it was all gonna be a trilogy in Sick. the same world. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it was so, so good. Um, I so I remember watching Unbreakable. I didn't understand it at the time because it was like. He was just like a really strong guy wearing a raincoat. Mm. It was like a superhero movie, but it was like a not a typical superhero movie. Right, yeah. You yeah. Know? But yeah, so and, and then um and then he came out with signs. So I really liked him from that signs, um, Sixth Sense. And then he started to fall off. Yeah. I was like, Oh man, like all your movies are not when he made the Avatar movie, like not the blue one, the Right, the Airbender, the Airbender it was like, one. Oh god, that's well, terrible. Well, well that's not even his original work, right? A lot of his movies are just his original like yeah. uh, uh, ideas or whatever. Right? Did you like Signs? Do you remember Signs? I remember Signs. Yeah, I, I, I really like that. That, that was like probably that one of my favorite alien movies. Probably yeah. my favorite alien movie actually, mm -hmm. to be honest. Yeah. And then um yeah, so then and then Split came out, and then at the very end, I didn't even know it was going to be in the same world until the very end of Split when they showed yeah. Bruce Willis again. I was like, oh, snap. But yeah, all right, so good, getting back to it. I really loved the cinematography in this one. M. Night Shyamalan has got really good camera angles. Mm -hmm. But I guess, is that really him, or is that the director of photography? 
Well, I mean, he finalizes these sort of things. I mean, he true, hires okay, those, true, he yeah. hires the right people in a sense, right? Yeah, and he's like, I'm envisioning this, like you. All right, true, true, true. But yeah, he's so, got a really great creative eye. I love the fact that he wrote and directed it. That's really cool. Yeah, I mean, this is original piece. He pulled a Stanley. He showed up in the movie. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it, he's, always he's always done that. Yeah, he's always done that. Uh, that yeah. so that was, um, it's a little bit of a. Uh, I mean. I felt like that kind of threw me off out of the Oh, movie. really? Yeah. Oh. Like, I was like... I liked it. I was like, ah. I know he does it all the time. I know it's it's part of his thing, but it was just kind of like, I didn't like that scene. Because you were like, oh, he's Stanley? No, I was like, yeah, I know who you are, bro. What are you doing in this movie? You're <laughs> oh, yeah, you're pulling me out of the... Uh... Yeah, the, the, the world or whatever. Yeah, true, true, true. Right? I see what you're saying. And then, like... But uh, what was a fu- funny to add in was like, oh, I know, I remember you from. That was like such a random moment that. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He like, did you remember. work in the football? How would you remember before? that? <laughs> yeah, true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. So that was kind of funny to see that. Uh, I liked. I like Samuel. But a, that doesn't a lot. really happen in the real world. No. Like you, I mean, like you don't. You, if you remember somebody from a long time ago, you don't actually. No, like, you don't remember them. You just, like, just act your first. Like, oh, I don't really remember you, <laughs> but you do remember them. You have a feeling you remember them, but you just act like you don't remember them. Right. Or maybe that's just me. Uh, I guess so. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, I guess it's, it's little things for I guess people that really liked his movies. It's like oh. I really Batman, loved how. I really loved how his son was like. It was like a Batman and Robin thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was really cool. That was cool to see that. I love Mr. Glass. He was yeah, sick. Samuel L. was yeah, a genius, uh, and the way they explained really cool like his intelligent like the way he did stuff mm. what i really liked was how it was like a secret society that has been like doing this for ten thousand years they don't want so yeah that was, like, a, that was a sick one, twist. one, one like, of the oh, twists yeah. and she's like tell me the truth did i almost have you mm. yeah so like all right huge spoiler alert at the end um he mr glass wants people basically even in um even in a beautiful no sorry not beautiful mind, even in um uh unbreakable yeah he wanted his whole mission from Unbreakable was to show people that superheroes exist. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. like he he was like, oh, I'm so weak, so there's got to be the counterpart to me. And then he was trying to like prove to the world that like, you know, there are uh, comic books are real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. He was saying like comic books are just like our iteration of like legend, but they all stem from truth. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, and then his goal at the end, like what he did was he made them fight on the world stage. And then he like, he recorded all the CCT camera, CCTV cameras and, uh, put it online on a streaming site. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was uh, pretty genius. Like, I like that a little bit at the end, yeah. uh, where those uh, guys at the comic shop was saying like, he's the mastermind. Yeah. Like, he... And then she realized like it was yeah. a suicide mission. <laughs> yeah. Like he knew he was going to die. Yeah, that, that was kind of cool. Like, he knew it all along, kind of. Like, these yeah. people exist. Secret society, whatever it was. Yeah, that was so good. Man, that was so good. And... So, I, I mm-hmm. like... I'm wondering what... I think the critiques were more, like, I guess... Uh, they were they were lost in the in the twists, I guess, or... That's so... They, du- they didn't understand... so well they, together. They didn't understand... I guess because I guess it was connected to the other movies that were so long ago. Maybe. But I didn't feel like that. I remember... No, yeah. I was, even though I haven't watched it for a long time, Unbreakable, I remember, like, the train scene. Like, that's, like, yeah. a pretty mm. um, prominent scene to know, like, what happened there. Yeah, for sure. And then, uh, I guess, I, I don't know. I, I, I was easy to follow through with the twists. Like, I, I like how like, they tied it together, how it was, like, they're both on the exact same train, the yeah. father. So he ended up creating both. Right, right. Mr. Glass ended up creating both the hero and the villain. That was sick. Mm-hmm. But what it really got me thinking, I think the final message of the movie was like, what we're all superhuman in our own ways. Like when he said, when he had that scene, when he's like, oh, science will always, mm-hmm. you know, explain away these supernatural things, but it doesn't mean that they're not supernatural. It's just, you just have a reasoning behind it now. Right. It doesn't mean they're not special. And then it made me think of like, it's trying to, what he was trying to do was inspire the world. Mm -hmm. And I kind of felt that same way. And it made me think of like different people. Like I just saw free solo and I was like, how did this guy climb the El Capitan without a rope? Yeah. Right. And then one would call him superhuman. Right. Right. And, uh, I was watching the behind the scenes 
like it was like a documentary talk on mm-hmm. uh, with the guy who climbed El Capitan, and then he was in Chad or something like some different country, and they're like technologically not advanced there. And then they saw him climbing, and then they're all shouting. And then he's like, "Oh, what are they shouting?" And they're like, "Oh, they believe he's a witch." And it's like, yeah, of course. Like mm-hmm. if you don't have the science to explain it away, you're gonna think it's supernatural. Right. And just like Mr. Glass was saying, it's like, yeah, just because you, the science says there's an explanation doesn't mean it's not special still. Right, yeah, yeah. And it was like, he was trying to tell people, like, we are special. And I like that about him. Mm-hmm. He was like the anti-hero. Yeah, yeah. He you becomes, know? yeah, it's very interesting, yeah. As a villain that he is, but he becomes, a, like, the change, the message of change. Like, yeah, yeah. The, the beacon of, of change. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. To, like, aspire for more and stuff. Yeah. I really like that. That was, that was a cool message. Like, even though you're like, oh, he's the evil villain, it's like, at the end, you want to believe as well. When they're in the train station, they're yeah. watching everyone get inspired by what they saw. It's like, yeah, man, like, mm. that's the gift. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And then the people who want to keep the secret society, who want to keep it like all status quo. Right. That's kind of like an analogy to our society right now, you know? Mm. It's like, it's like, keep them in chains or whatever. Like, we can control them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, that, that was, uh, yeah, that was uh, the the twist that I liked. Yeah, at the end there. Yeah. It was the secret society team. And and then those are the true bad guys. And then it was cool right. how he's like, he's like, this wasn't a. She's like, oh, you never told me about the special edition ending or whatever. And he's like, he's like, this wasn't a special edition. This was a uh, origin story. Mm-hmm. And it made the see. All right, so, this is so where I we was. Differ. That's what again was a little twist. Like, oh, what does that mean? So I, I honestly think that um, there's going to be more. Like, this is just the beginning of the whole series, Yeah, I think. Okay. But you, you differ on this. You think it's over. I think it m- might be over, yeah. Like, just leave it at three? Yeah, or or it's like, who are Aren't these? Aren't they going to battle? Yeah, so who I mean, are these, or these people? Yeah, that's, that's what, what I think. That's like, what you thinking. have to battle the freaking right. secret society now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but like, will he do it though? You know what I mean? It's I, like, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. I'm like, I don't know if you will follow that story because it's like, it's already really good. Let people like mm-hmm. live on their imaginations. Right. Unless you have an a even better story, you know? Yeah. But, I don't know. But I, I thought it was uh, super well done. <laughs> really 20 year old trilogy in a sense. And then I really like it. Reminded me of that Ethan Hawke movie. I haven't seen it, but they filmed the movie over seven years. Ethan Hawke movie? Yeah. It was like, um, I was watching one of his... Oh, I see. Where, the, the one, like, following through the kid? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's like the tale of a childhood, and, like, they actually filmed it over seven years. Right, right, right. That was kind of cool. But, yeah, I, I love that they use the same actors in this one because it made it feel more real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was... Did you feel bad for Mr. Glass? At the end, or...? Like, just him and his mom, like, they had such a cute relationship. And they showed like Mr. Glass is like this little frail boy. Remember the oh yeah the those scenes. So like, those see up? those scenes put him more human. Yeah, I was like, so wow, made him more human. I get like, why you're uh, doing all this. Yeah, exactly. You know, and yeah. then when he's like, oh, I've only known pain my entire life. It's like, wow, and then of course yeah, you, yeah, of course yeah. you do like this. <laughs> but it, it just it just goes to show you that we're just a domino effect of choices or like our experiences. Like it's all a ripple effect in time. Right. You know what I mean? Because, like, he, he, when you watch it like that, mm-hmm. you you get why people become the way they are. It's like, uh, because that was also a sped up version, right? We saw his childhood and then we jumped to the present. And you're like, mm-hmm. oh, of course you're going to be like this. But it's right. like when I watch the, the videos I made of myself, mm-hmm. right? I'm like, oh, yeah, of course that kid in that video is going to be me today. Yeah. You see the choices that led up to this and, like, the mindset mentality right Mm -hmm. but we don't think of ourselves as like a movie played in fast motion no you know yeah that's true like there's nothing in that movie where i was like oh they wouldn't act like this even like the the um, james mcavoy mcavory whatever his name is like yeah the amazing actor uh when they're talking about how he's like abused as a kid Mm -hmm. it's like of course you're going to become like this as well and then they were saying like what's your origin story to uh, Bruce Willis, remember? And he was like, he was weak, like he was being drowned in the pool. Yeah, yeah, I, I, 
So that was like, there you go. That's why you are weak. Yeah. But like, I don't think they said that in Unbreakable. They never showed that scene. I don't think so. Being drowned. I don't remember that. I don't remember that either. But when they when they showed it here, it's like, yeah, that is why you psychologically break down, even though you have a superpower of being invincible. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's like, yeah, it's like, how does magic affect Superman? But just because it doesn't work in his reality, like, I don't know. Like, it's a dumb thing to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, as you were saying. It's like a dumb thing to be weak to, but. Yeah, it yeah. But yeah. maybe it's some psychological thing. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Right. Which is interesting. That's a cool way to play. It's like mm-hmm. if you're so invincible, how come water's your kryptonite? Oh, because you had a traumatic incident when you were a kid. Right. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It's like if I had superpowers and then somebody brought a needle and I'm like, Oh my god, no, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> You know, like, but you're so strong. You know, like, mm-hmm. I often get this because, like, being black belt and stuff, like, oh, but you're a black belt. How come you're afraid of needles? And it's like, yeah, but you don't get it, though, because I've had traumas of needles as a kid. Right. So it's just like this this guy with his, like, but you're invincible. How can you be afraid of water? Mm-hmm. It's because he's had trauma. Again, ripples in time, you know. One thing will lead to other things. And yeah. I think that's why you should always be mindful of, you know, your actions, because you never mm-hmm. know where they're going to lead to other people. Right. All actions have consequences. Whoops. All mm-hmm. actions have consequences. And I think that that's another cool part of the, the movie, too, because, like, he put it out into the world that you're, well, there's superhumans out there, mm-hmm. you know, and that was his ripple effect in time. He's like, this will affect somebody's life. He's, yeah. cre- he's creating multiple origin stories, just like how he created um, Bruce Willis's character and James Nick. McAvery's character mm-hmm. you know what I mean like yeah, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. he he created them and now he's trying to create more of them yes uh, okay. through another giant yeah. accident because he created uh, Bruce Willis's character by explo- like well both characters because of that train incident mm-hmm. it was something major yeah. Right? yeah 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 and then this one's another major one it's like okay now the whole world's gonna see superheroes it's like who's gonna come out of this now mm-hmm. you know I think there's so many layers to this, like the layers of genius that are tied to this movie. I guess nobody's getting that, yeah. I know, yeah. That, but that's that's why we really like the movie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You have to look at the yeah, you gotta look at like the deeper meaning. I think it's like the moral message, like those old stories. Yeah, for sure. It's like at the end of the story it's like it, that's uh, why it's I the moral say, story. It, that's why so like alright, so I guess it's no secret, my favorite director is Guy Ritchie. And when I saw the interview when he's like uh, a true storyteller like there's levels to all stories mm-hmm. and he's going so deep into it and Joe Rogan's like like how do you know people aren't just gonna like watch a cool movie right and he's like but I'm a storyteller it's my job to tell stories right and to look at the origin of story like why is this story special and I can safely say that like M. Night Shyamalan is a storyteller yeah because it's like he wasn't just telling you because like you know those like stupid movies where there's no lesson and you're just like okay it's like, no. a dumb movie yeah you know yeah. but this was like an entertaining movie with a deep message. There's layers to it. Mm-hmm. It's like a Disney movie. Yeah. You know, because Disney movies have the same thing. They have, like, layers and layers. Yeah. Yeah. Any final thoughts? Uh, do you want... I don't know, like, how... If he's going to continue in this... Like, I do want to see more. I, I just don't know don't if I want to see more. I'm, I'm, I, I'm I don't torn. know yeah, I how you can I'm torn. go into telling more I want to see this. more, but I don't want you to F up the series. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's so good the way it is right now. Like, because you cause have he, more, cause, cause, it's crap. Right, because like, at the ooh. end, it's like those, the one with the clover or whatever. Those, those, who are those people? Who are those people, yeah. right? They said 10,000 years they've been doing this. Exactly. Exactly. Who are these people? The, yeah, exactly. So either you go into explaining who these people are or like a different story, but you, then you relate it to this world in a sense. That would be kind of cool if they do like another split. Yeah. Where it's like it's a whole different story. You think it's a whole different story and then like boom, they – It's, it it's all part of this world. Yeah. Did you notice the uh, – it's so funny because like – now they've been getting tattoos I've been like fixating on people's tattoos I'm like oh I wonder what I can get next you know Mm -hmm. and like so the nurse the male nurse in that movie he had a tattoo on his inner forearm I didn't even notice that that's what I'm saying so I was like ooh what's that tattoo right does it have any significance or like well because I'm like oh looking at this like the subtleties and I'm pretty sure it's the same tattoo that they all had the three leaf clover oh yeah, the the male nurse, he had the tattoo on his inner form. 
Oh, it was really? small. And I was like, because I was like, oh, I wonder why you got that small tattoo. What does that mean to you? Blah, blah, blah. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, what's the story behind it? And then, like, seeing it. As seeing it came at, out. No, at the end when yeah, they yeah, showed. Yeah. So when they showed the sniper with the three leaf clover, I was like, oh, did he survive? I thought he died. Like, what? And then they all had the tattoo. I'm like, oh, mm. they were alluding to it the entire time with this male nurse. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's what a lot of movies do. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was like, you watch it again. It's sick. like, oh, he had it the whole time. Yeah. You just didn't know. Yeah. But because I'm fixating on tattoos, I started right, like, right. looking at him like, oh, why is that there? And then, <laughs> and then I saw everyone with the same tattoo. I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah, this was, okay, there was one scene uh, I will criticize. Well, not criticize, more like, what was, like, really You're bored? Happy. Like, what? No, no, not bored, not bored. When they were drowning um, Bruce Willis's character. When he was old or young? No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, when he was older. Like, when they the killed him off. Scene. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Like, that's, like, way out in the open. Or nobody going to stop this. That's what I was thinking. Oh. No, was like, was where was the that. kid? Oh, no. Yeah, they pulled the kid away. I know, but I was like, there's other people there. I guess, but... I guess the whole... Is it the whole thing? Well, I guess all of them were part of that. Yeah, uh, I, th- I thought so. No, no, I know, I know, I know. But I was just thinking, like... It's just like... Uh, yeah, there's like... That's that's the only one I was like... Because uh, this is going on for a while. You kind of drowned him and... Uh, he, then they allowed his kid to come in there? <laughs> so, for, okay. for sure, for sure. So that kind of felt he, weird. You know, you know what really got me thinking... Uh, when I saw that whole secret society thing, I was like, there are 100% secret societies. Like, we just don't know about them. And they wouldn't call themselves secret societies. I'm pretty sure we had a podcast about this before. Probably. Where it's like, you and I are technically a secret society because we know each other through, like, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah, like, yeah, people yeah. aren't in on it. So, like, technically it could be a secret society. It's like, <laughs> But it's, it's like, what I'm saying is, like, secret societies are normal. Yeah. It's just like yeah. when you get into a position of power, of course you're going to keep the same people close to you. Mm-hmm. It's like, think about, if, if you're listening to this and you're like, oh, secret societies are evil. It's like, but do you have friends that you, like, entrust things to? Yeah, right? So it's the same right. thing with secret societies. If they have all this money, of course they're going to share that money to their friends and they're like, okay, well, what else can we do? What else can we do? You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, all right, not so I'm reading this like religion book right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called How the World Works, and they just go into like different religions. But what they're saying is, at the time, you know, there's like there's a lot of anti Semitism about like like Jews ruling the world. Yeah. Right? And then I was like, oh, like where would they get that from? I don't understand. And then reading about it, um, they were persecuted for such a long time. The only job that they could get because they weren't allowed to get other jobs. Um, in ancient times, yeah, like they were like a persecuted race, which is very re- weird. They've been persecuted forever, right? Um, and they're saying that the only job that they could turn to is money lending, mm-hmm. or l- lending or something. Yeah, okay. So okay. like they would give you money, and then you would they would charge you interest. Mm-hmm. But th- that was seen as like a negative profession because they didn't believe you should you should charge interest. But it's like okay, so you were technically the first bank. Like look at it this oh, yeah, way, yeah, yeah, your yeah. bank. So it's like. Yeah, banks rule through money, and look how much banks now um, rule everything. Mm-hmm. Credits through bank, everything's bank related, right? So it's like, yeah, of course you'll come to the assumption that they're they're ruling the world secretly. Maybe they are. Who knows? You know. But like over time, if you're built, if you built a castle with a strong foundation, yeah, you know what I mean, of course you yeah. can build upon it more and more. Yeah. Song wants that toy so bad. <laughs> yeah. All right. But yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. F- uh, secret societies, they're a hundred percent real. They just wouldn't call themselves secret societies. I'm sure. <laughs> but I mean, if we, if I think you, this is a bad me, connotation to to that secret societies. Just yeah, the yeah. word itself, like that. I feel like if you, me, and a bunch of our friends got the same tattoo, they would call us secret society. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like. It's just kind of human nature. Mm-hmm. Like, would you not call? I just don't know, think they're like. I think what people think nefarious. of nefarious. They're not uh, yeah. as nefarious as people. Yeah, think. I, yeah, I just think people think that they're like when you use that kind of word, it's like oh, they're controlling everything. Yeah, I like. I don't think they're I think controlling they have power everything. controls, but I don't think they're controlling everything. Yeah, because there's so it's many possible. things involved, right? That exactly. I don't think yeah. It's possible to control everything. Yeah. Yeah. And like how they talk about like Saudi Arabia having lots of money. Of course, there's gonna be secret societies there, but. Like they have secret parties. Like they I'm would sure. have influence because they have a lot of money. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's like it's not it's not <laughs> it's not outright nefarious. It's yeah, like, right. well, what are you gonna do with the powers you're given? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if so 
because I have because people who go to university are educated and people that don't go to university like they go to like high school or they don't even finish high school mm. it's like oh they're uneducated so are they not a part of your secret society of college goers and university goers you know we're all just given different hands so it's like I shouldn't use my intelligence right. you know I shouldn't use my money I shouldn't mm-hmm. use my influence like of course you're going to you're just given I feel like it's encapsulated in this quote like we're all given we're all dealt a hand of cards that we can't really change but we play the life's game according to the hand that we're dealt yeah you know like it's like poker yeah you know we're all given these like oh we're all given these these like cards in a poker game and it's like okay can you bluff your way out can you like mm-hmm. create ally- alliances and stuff it's like life right yeah just play it to the rules of the game you're given yeah so yeah. final score I'm gonna stick to the eight. I'm gonna give it a nine. I jumped up higher just through this conversation. I knew it was gonna happen. I was like, because I was like on the fence. I was like, I eight point two, and I was like, but I could be swayed higher or lower. But mm-hmm. after talking about it, like, no, it's it's definitely a must see. Would you say it's a must see? Uh, yeah. And you haven't, if you haven't seen the other ones, I think you should see those. Oh yeah, for sure. You those, should uh, Unbreakable see and Split, and then you watch this one. Yeah, such Glass. a great M Night Shyamalan is a legend for this three three part series. I guess, yeah. Um, so it's interesting, yeah. I mean, all those movies are named after those three characters. Yeah. 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 And like Glass finally got his. Yeah, yeah. This was about him. Yeah, that's why I knew it was going to be a trilogy. Like, because like. No, I know, I know. It was interesting like, to see no, that. Oh, it's unbreakable for Bruce Willis. I don't even know his, what's his name. <laughs> J- J- Joseph Dunn, John Dunn. Yeah. Dunn, something. Something like that. And then, and then Split. Yeah. And then. I love how they gave him the most basic name ever. Like Joseph Dunn or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, like, I guess they try so. to make him super yeah, normal. Yeah. yeah, maybe do it like the John Doe's, like anyone. Yeah, he's a, yeah, he's a, like something like that. Yeah, so definitely go check out this movie. Uh, watch a bunch of walkthroughs if you miss us for the next three weeks, because we won't do a podcast. But look forward to our recap of India when Bish gets back, and we're getting it on record. Bish is going to look for a Shiva statue. We said apartment. that last time too. We did say it. You couldn't find it. No. But now we're gonna look again. I guess. Yeah. If you find a Shiva statue. I told you right. Uh, Not d- many people. D- you yeah, can find more Buddha statues. Which is kind of weird. Which is kind of weird. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's odd. But I guess it's like those. It became like a huge trinket piece. I guess. Yeah. That China just makes over and over and over. So it's you, easy you know, to sell those. It's it's weird. The more I read about like all this stuff. Like, I find my tolerance getting really high. For what? To- for people. Oh, okay. So, like, I was in line, and um, this person ahead of me was, like, getting really upset. But I like, I don't want to, like, out who they are. But <laughs> uh, I was in line at a coffee shop, and the person in front of me, I knew them, but they didn't know I was there. And then they were getting really upset, apparently. I wasn't really paying attention. But they were getting upset over, like something menial like oh they didn't have the the item that i wanted mm-hmm. right but this person i knew they they practiced yoga okay. so i was like okay like you should be more tolerant then mm-hmm. and i realized like but then like they're like they always like commend me for being like patient and stuff but i'm like i'm patient because i know that whatever it is you're believing in that's irritating is like irritating you because mm-hmm. right, so I've gotten this like oh you're very patient I'm like yeah to your things because I don't care enough about those things mm-hmm. but like I'm very impatient about things that I want right but understanding this it's like okay so you're just being impatient right now mm-hmm. I feel like the more we educate ourselves the more tolerance we build for the world right you know and like and I feel like yeah, I was I was going somewhere. <laughs> no, I just I like I don't know, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. yeah, what happened? No, no, I just I don't know. <laughs> it, it it was it was gonna relate back somehow, but I just couldn't figure. I couldn't remember where I was going because I was like so wrapped in that story. Okay, but yeah, educate yourself. These are our social narratives. So like, oh, okay, just yeah. like religion, because we were just talking about religion, and um, I find that the more you educate yourself on like religious things, you realize that they're just stories that we're telling ourselves. 
you know, mm-hmm. like because it's like oh, God's real. You know, like the 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 image of God, like somebody in the sky, right? We'll never know if that's true or not, right? You know, the argument's always like, well, you'll never know. You're right. I will never know. Mm-hmm. But what I do know is that if I'm not thinking about it, then he's not real. Okay. But he's not in my head. Yeah, the yeah, only yeah. time he becomes real is when I have to think about him to make him real, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So that, by default, means that he's not real to me. Okay. Because I, I'm not, I don't require to have to think about him. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't need him right now. But when I'm scared and I'm like, God, help me right now, then he's real because I need him now. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And like, but that's just like all narrative, all stories. Mm-hmm. Like we are, we are this weird race of thinking beings that easily gets swept up in thought. That's why the Zen Buddhists believe like if you just don't think, then life becomes way more easy. Right. So like the story of glass, yeah. the story of unbreakable, the story of like split, they're all just like social narratives, stories, yeah. you know, that we choose and this is, to help guide us or not. Yeah, this is. But that's like, why. Well, but but that's why when when we we're saying like, oh, do you think people will get that? It's like, yeah, but M Night Shyamalan's a true storyteller because he knows that there are layers to everything. Yeah, you know, I think you storytellers know that. I mean, yeah, storytellers do know that. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's why I like these things. It's kind of like puts you in their shoes. Yeah, to get their perspective and stuff. That's just how I view things. Like from story wise, but yeah. Yeah. What's their narrative? What's their like what 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 their story they're pushing stuff. behind? Yeah, 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 I get what you're saying. Like, why did you choose to make this movie? And like, mm-hmm. like, why did you choose to put layers into it? Like, if you wrote this movie, you're definitely trying to tell the world something, without yeah. having to overtly tell the world something. Right. I remember this. All right. So like, it's funny. So I write these like little weird quotes for um, Persons Academy, but also Young Yoda. But I did it for Persons Academy, and I said something about like, uh, they're like for truth. Okay, wait, hold on. Let me just pull it up. Because it was so good. And I was like, yeah, I just I just pulled it on you to that guy. Hold on. 30 seconds as I pull it up. Um, so I wrote this. Uh, you, cannot, you cannot seek freedom while disdaining objectivity. Okay. Okay? So basically what I'm trying to say there is like you, you can't – unless you're being fully objective, then there's no freedom. Mm-hmm. Because if you're not objective, then you're attached to an idea of some sort. Because objectivity means that you're able to adapt, right? Objectively speaking, oh, if I was wrong, I was wrong. Let me move on. Right. Right? That's true freedom, the ability to not attach yourself to one idea. Okay. Right? You agree? Yeah. So then the guy wrote some, like, random. He wrote, um, one person's concept of freedom may have nothing to do with objectivity. In fact, their freedom may require a lack and blah, 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 blah. So he's like... Uh, unless you meant true freedom. And then I was like, yeah, you came to the conclusion that I was speaking about without me having to write that whole thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you look at the quote on the surface, you're like, oh, that's a nice quote. But then if you actually deconstruct it, there's layers to it. Mm-hmm. Just like stories, like storytellers. Yeah, stuff. yeah. You know. Yeah. I like that. I like that art of layering meaning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. All right. Right. <laughs> now it's it's funny how you go so deep into like a hole that you're like, all right, I should just stop thinking about this now. It's like super, super trippy. Okay, if we made sense, cool. If we didn't make sense, sorry. But we'll see you all in three weeks. Yeah, or so. Or so. Till next time. Hoys. Watch some walkthroughs. Finally got through this. <laughs> Bye. Bye.